Hi, I'm Janet Ingle, the 5-Minute Read Maker. I'm trying to close out my Season 2 with some exploration of shapes and shaper tips because this is by far the most common question that I've gotten since I started this video series. What do the shapes represent and what do the characteristics of uh, those shapes, how do those translate to the characteristics of the finished reads? Um, and the reason this is difficult for me is because it's not a very scientific thing. Like to generalize very broadly, I'll say that narrower reads, especially reads that are straighter uh, rather than more flared, um, tend to favor the highest register, tend to uh, keep pitch better uh, together in the upper register. Um, whereas reads that are wider and reads that have a little bit more flair tend to be better in the lowest register. Um, but it's such a broad generalization, and really it depends very much not just on the measurements of the read itself, but on the way you get from one measurement to another, in other words, the curvature of the sides. Um, and so really what I have, rather than scientific um, excellence here, is just sort of my intuitive feelings about my own shapes. And so um, because I have a lot of shapes, I'm going to try to do this in three different videos. This is the first one, and I'm looking at my minus one N, my minus one. These are both Gilbert shapes, RDG minus one N and RDG minus one. And then I'm looking at Caleb minus one and Caleb. Um, I felt like exploring these minus ones versus non-minus ones, zeros, I guess, theoretically, um, might give us something of some interest. Then in my in another video, I'll take a look at Sarah, Ruth minus two, Ruth, and Samson plus one. Um, again, I'm just dealing with the shapes that I already own and have in my in my stable of shaper tips, um, because there are hundreds, hundreds of shapers out there. Um, so I'm hoping that this is of some value. With all four of these reads, I uh, wound them up at about 73, as I always do. Um, when I tried to measure just on a ruler and get some specific numbers for you, turns out they're all about seven millimeters at the tip. Um, they all seem, as far as I can read on a ruler, they're all similar. There's, there's shockingly little difference. Um, between the way these shapes look and the way these shapes act. Um, but as I play them, they do feel a little bit different to me. So here's my minus one N. It is, according to all of the um, charts that I've seen, it is the narrowest of the shapes that I regularly use. Um, but I don't find that that actually lends itself to shallowness or sharpness. In fact, I'm able to get a, a quite a deep and pleasant sound from it. It sits nicely in the high register and assuming that I've made the read well, it's also perfectly adequate in the lowest register. In comparison, here's the RDG minus one. It looks to me a little wider and thicker in the belly. It appears a little bit more flared toward the top as well. When I play it, It's perfectly nice, right? It has a really pleasant sound. Um, again, it holds its pitch up adequately well. It responds nicely enough in the lowest register. For me, there's just a little bit more uh, tubbiness to it, I guess. Whereas the minus one end focuses very, very easily. And gives me an immediate density of sound. The minus one N, excuse me, the minus one, seems to have a little bit more air around it, seems to be a little bit more diffuse in sound. It's not necessarily a bad thing, that's just the way I experience it, and in general, I prefer the minus one N, that's what I use most often. Over here I've got the Caleb minus one and the Caleb. Actually, both of these at one time or another have been my standard shape, um, the one that I use most often. Here's Caleb minus one. It has a really 
really pleasant sound. It is a little bit wider in this area, sort of the belly area, than the minus one N, which is uh, quite a bit more narrow and straight right there. Um, I don't, sometimes during some seasons of the year, I have difficulty getting Caleb minus one to come up to pitch. That doesn't seem to be an issue for me right now. It uh, made a read very easily when I, when I started working on it. Um, and the Caleb, not minus one. It's still a great shape, but in the same way that the minus one was a little uh, tubbier, a little more diffuse than the minus one N, um, I find that this Caleb is a little bit more diffuse than the Caleb minus one. I notice a distinct difference in pitch. Caleb minus one versus Caleb. Certainly nothing I can't adjust to and nothing that I can't tweak a little bit with my knife, um, but two reeds that are finished similarly do seem to sit a little bit apart with the Caleb a little flatter than the Caleb minus one, uh, which makes sense since it's a little bit wider. Again, the, uh, the extra tubbiness down here seems to translate for me to a little bit more diffuseness um, in a way that I don't necessarily welcome in my own playing. I like to have the immediate focus and density in the sound that I'm getting from both Caleb uh, minus one and from the Gilbert minus one N as I work on these. So I know that this video is vague and I'm not even sure that you can hear the differences uh, between these shapes that I'm feeling in my mouth as I play, although I'm trying to uh, share their characteristics as clearly as I can. But this really feels like the best I can do in this matter. Um, I know everyone is curious and I'm trying to show you uh, what I can about these different shapes. Uh, tune in next week when I will try to bring you four more of these shapes. And I do hope that it has been somewhat helpful. Um, this has been a five minute read maker lesson. You can follow these short videos right here on YouTube. You can subscribe if you wish. If you have questions or comments, or if you want to order reads or cane, you can find me at JanetIngle.com. And I would love to hear from you. Was this helpful at all? What other questions do you have about read making? What should my next video or my next season cover for you? Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day.